And you're very welcome. This is Finton Dunn reporting. Thank you for joining us. And thanks also to our sponsor, Neemwell.com. It's your personal source for potent Indian neem. And it's something I use on a daily basis, as long as I can sort of flitch some from the stocks here. Um, I use neem and lots of listeners here are using neem. If you are new to neem or have not tried it yet, check out neemwell.com. It's N-E-E-M. W E L L dot com or email Kathy K A T H Y at Neemwell dot com. And so here we are at this third in the series nine eleven without tinfoil and there's a guarantee of no tinfoil in this episode. I can't say the same about the forum, I'm afraid. Yet there definitely is bits of tinfoil lying around the forum. But hey, it's free expression. It's it's a free country, as they used to say. And uh, anyway, uh, one side to a story would probably be quite boring. So there you go. I think in any event, there's plenty of people in the forum well capable of detecting and or debunking tinfoil. And they've done a great job. Due to time pressure, I haven't had the time to participate as much as I would like. But, and for me to say I'm under time pressure for somebody who's been under time pressure since around about September 2001, that's saying something. But uh, I would also like to apologize to those of you who have emailed in that I haven't had a chance to respond to. Please do understand it's more important to maintain the forum, participate in it, write articles, do research and do audios. And uh, I've got to do that. And I'd like to extend the same apology to those who have contributed, whom I have not thanked personally. Your contributions are gratefully accepted and vital, and thank you very much. Now, we have hung in there for over five years. There you go, for over five years. And this audio, I think, is the most significant, most important audio that we've produced since the CIA fakes. We are going to take 9-11 to the next level, a next level of understanding, a new context of understanding 9-11 that changes the whole dynamic of how we perceive the so-called evidence, background, etc., and how we present that and how we analyze it. I'm talking about things like the fact that our implicit assumption that classic cover-up dynamics apply in the case of 9-11 is totally wrong. It is not a classic cover-up type situation. In fact, one of the entire thrusts of the deception campaign in relation to 9-11 has been to present it as a classic cover-up issue. You see, to slot it into that box in your brain. No, the dynamic of this is different because they have evolved in the sophistication of their psychological warfare over the last 20 years. So there's never been a psychological warfare event of this type before. And it's quite new. It's new in design. It's new in execution. Its imperatives and its underlying motivations are different, completely different than standard cover-up dynamics. And if you see 9-11 in the context of standard cover-up dynamics, if you perceive it in that way, you will remain forever confused. Why? Because that's the way they've designed it, is to keep you permanently confused. Whereas if you move to the next level, then you get a new level of understanding. I'm going to use some trigger words here just to get this across. They don't say it all, but they sum it up. One of the trigger phrases is 9-11 truth is a psyop. Not just 9-11 was a psyop. We know that 9-11 was one of the greatest psychological operations. What most people haven't realized is that the whole idea of exposing the truth of 9-11 is also psyop. Everything is psyop. This is the information age, folks. You fight warfare with psyop. Psyop. And not only do these people have military forces at their disposal, they also have the best psychological warfare tacticians in the business on the planet. Unfortunately, there also exists on the planet, (laughs) they haven't figured a way of getting rid of me, the best psychological warfare analyst on the planet. (laughs) And you're tuned in right now. Everything is PSYOP. Everything about the way these people do business is PSYOP. They are the masters of PSYOP. In many ways, I'm not cluing you into anything you don't sort of know. Let's go back to the invasion of Iraq itself. Shock and awe was the tactic It's part of the revolution in military affairs. Shock and awe means that it's not necessarily the number of bombs that you drop on the enemy. It's the fact that you might choose to drop half of them in a period of three days to totally demoralize the enemy, to create an environment in which the enemy is confused, feels powerless, is demoralized, is overpowered, is psychologically affected in such a way that you don't have to fight so hard against the enemy because you've done it with psi war. 
That's the way they do military business. And you bet that's the way they do all the other business. And that's the way they did 9-11 at every level. Now, this applies to everything. It applies to all the evidence of 9-11. It applies to the entire political social construct and many other stories which knit in to the 9-11 story. They're using the same MO in it all. And it's a psychological warfare. It's founded in the science of behavior control and in the predictability of human response. And it's based in tactical, practical terms on the Chinese walls in the media and on the control they have in media. That is enabling them to wage very subtle psi war. I wrote about this back in May 2004, on the 18th of May, my birthday. And uh, just read you the introductory sentences to this article. The article is called Iraqatrix, and it's I-R-I-Q-A-T-R-I-X, and you can Google that. By now, you must know the Nick Berg beheading video was some kind of fake or scam. How could you not know? The internet is a buzz with details of a host of video anomalies. That's what I wrote. Continuing. Face it, you've just been psyop, brutally, shrewdly. The Berg video was part of a psyop. The aim is to traumatize you with images of brutal abuse to foster the fascist social mindset in support of the war on terror. The abuse in Guantanamo, the photos of abuse, were deliberately released. So what I was saying there is that the whole Guantanamo thing was deliberately released. All that torture stuff, etc., has been deliberately released. All the stuff about torture, I mean, does it ever stop? Torture, torture, torture. Any idea what the psychological warfare idea might be behind that? Could be, maybe, to surround you with the issue of torture. Talk about torture. Images of torture. Are you getting it? Psychological warfare. And then we had the Nick Berg video, the beheading video, released. And it went around the internet. And there were 50 identified anomalies in the video. I mean, when you took a look at it, you could see they had the build and shape of U.S. Special Forces. What's going on? Those are the kind of questions that were going around the back of my head at the time. And I was working some of it out, such as the fact that the Abu Ghraib scandal was a deliberate scandal. And I ended up speaking about the Berg issue on Alex Jones. They had to have me on at least once, and it seemed safe. And I was talking about how the glaring anomalies in in the video And their wide circulation, and the wide circulation of these glaring anomalies must mean that they were somehow wanting to allow more people in onto the fact that that they were behind, that the powers that be, so to speak, were behind stuff that was going on. For example, the chair which was used in the Nick Berg beheading video was the same kind of chair as in the photos in Abu Ghraib. It means nothing to somebody unless you've studied this stuff. But if you have, it's sort of saying to you, Hey, yeah, we did. We beheaded that guy. That's my first clue. And it's a subtle clue, but it explains the psychological warfare landscape we're talking about. Let's take another clue that there's something else, something bigger going on than just the 9-11, and then they try and cover it up, and then we try and bring out the truth dynamic, you know, the predictable dynamic. And here it is, the 7-7 bombings, and that CCTV footage which was released, which, once again, I studied it, I examined it, I found it, whatever... 5, 10, 15 different anomalies. Weird CCTV footage because there's a bar going through some guy's arm and it's all blurred and indistinct. And, and you're thinking, well, I could do... I could If I had access to the, to the original photos of those four guys, I could fake better than that. Anybody could fake better than that. That is just pathetic. Uh, are these people that incompetent? No, not that incompetent. That happened deliberately as well. Now are you starting to get it? The implicit assumption of classic cover-up dynamics is wrong. There's something bigger going on here. It's a bigger game going on here. 9-11 Truth is an irony in that pathetic movie that was released. plain In plain sight movie. And there's a deep irony there. Because 9-11 itself, the whole thing, is actually hidden in plain sight. P-L-A-I-N. S-I-G-H-T. No play on words. 9-11 is hidden in plain sight. It's there and yet we're not seeing it because we're not expecting it because we're playing using the old rules and they're not. In the old rules, the government, the forces behind the scenes, whoever, does their level best to hide everything they're up to. But despite their best efforts, the valiant truth seekers find them out and expose the facts they tried to hide. But in this, they don't do their level best at all. They do their level worst. Could you do a worse job on the 7-7? 
CCTV footage than they did. So they're not doing their level best to hide. They're doing something else. They're doing something more important than playing the hide-and-seek game. Something that's tactically more important than hide-and-seek. As I said in the intro, they're psyoping in every sector all the time. In fact, they're using a population-distributed psychological warfare tactic, behavior modification, behavior control tactic, which is layered psywar. Psywar in three directions, and every single thing they do is playing the three-layered game. And if you don't know what the three-layered game is, then you haven't got a hope, because this is slick. They can use one event, and they can spin it, design it and spin it in three different directions from the same event and get three different psychological warfare results in three different segmented targeted sections of the population thus psyoping the whole population but doing them in three defined segments now that's more that's tactically more important than anything you might say, why would they release those photos of the uh, prisoners in Guantanamo Bay and, and have America shamed like that? Well, because having America shamed is part of the PSYOP. But let's leave that to one side. But would they really do that if it made things hot for them, etc.? If it made it got them in trouble? Hey, well, it diverts everybody for a while, doesn't it? But more importantly, it gets torture into the consciousness of those who view the material. It gets torture into your brain. And with psychological warfare... It doesn't matter how the stuff ends up in your brain. They don't care. As long as you're watching the grotesque images, as long as you are being affected in the subconscious mind, the visual mind, by what you see and by the stories you're exposed to and by the revulsion that it causes, that's all that matters. Because political issues don't matter. They control politics anyway. What are you going to do if you think 9-11 was an inside job? (laughs) Vote for somebody different? Give me a break. They have it sewn up. So they don't need to hide stuff because of the political consequences anymore. They haven't. Not for at least the last 10 years, maybe 15. Political consequences don't arise. Why? Because psychological warfare is so sophisticated. They are playing the threefold layered game. And when we understand that game, then all of the evidence about 9-11 makes sense. And the way it has come out, etc., all makes sense. And all of the other stuff that's going on makes sense too. Once you know that Psy War is everything. I've been doing this since September 2001. It was very, very important to release the CIA internet fakes. But the ongoing Psy War campaign is a bigger truth to be aware of. The fact that we are operating under the de facto dictatorship in the United States of George Bush Sr. is more important than just proving the government pulled off 9-11. That gets you a piece of the puzzle picture. This is going to give you the puzzle picture of 9-11 so that it now makes sense. And I'll be back in just a moment to explain how it works. Right after. Piece of music from one of our listeners. And uh, hey, maybe I'll just turn over the music to the listeners because I've gotten some great music tracks in. And uh, thanks guys for sending them in. And uh, we'll play one right now. And if you have any suggestions, then please send them in. Meanwhile, this is Ill Bill and American History. You know that thing. It's the sort of stuff that you repeat until you learn. You're on the next level on BreakForNews.com. And you're very welcome back. You're on the next level on BreakForNews.com. Yeah. Same scumbag government, same scumbag way of running shit. That's what motivates me when I think consequences of what these people are doing consequences that's what motivates me it's also important it's known what's going down that somewhere it's known that's what's important that we keep that flame alive because hey who else is telling you this stuff exactly only here on the next level where we're about to take 9-11 to the next level and explain the three-fold psyop game that they're playing now they're playing lots of games They're playing the confusion game, the orgy of evidence game that we talked about earlier. But this is the most important game. It runs through everything. And let's start somewhere simple. And as we build this, you'll see they've got us again and again and again with the same MO. So let's start with something I raised in the first episode, I think, of 9-11 without tinfoil. The passport. The hijacker's passport found in the street. What a piece of evidence, eh? 
How ridiculous can you get? But hold on a second. You're in the mainstream media. The government just announced they found a passport. You've got to report it. I've touched on this before. And the back of your mind, and you are target group one, by the way, because you're in the mainstream media, you have to report this. Or let's say you're a business person, you have to read this stuff. And you're target group one. You are the kind of right-thinking people who are and tend to be on the right politically, but they're certainly right-thinking, and they don't like to think wrong thoughts, unlike those lefties, weirdos. Now, here we're dealing with the people who like to think the right way and think the right things, no matter how ridiculous they are. And that can be exploited. So the passport is found, and the right-thinking people read this, and in the back of their minds, a little voice goes, that's a bit funny that a passport should survive that kind of a conflict and be found in the street and announced quickly on television but that thought is quickly suppressed because right thinking people don't like to think those kind of wrong thoughts they're disturbing kind of thoughts really that you don't want to think too much about and so it gets repressed and redirected it can be redirected for example in anger against an external enemy that's better than having to face up to anger against whoever pulled this off in your own country, (laughs) who may have been your own countryman. A lot easier. But the psychological dynamic there is that the right-thinking mind sees the holes in the story, but at the same time can't admit to them. And so that's repressed and causes tension, causes internal tension and underlying subconscious uncertainty in those individuals, which can be mobilized into aggressive action against an an external enemy. Useful side effect, but also it keeps them in the box. But it's quite subtle as far as they're concerned. They are group one, and they are the mainstreamers, we'll call them. Group one target for psychological warfare, the mainstreamers. Group two target, with the same passport story now, right? (laughs) Same passport story, also has a group two target. That's those people who are just a bit too awake to go into the repression thing, to buy into that. No, they know there's something a bit funny about this passport. Now, we're just taking this one bit of evidence now. I'll use other examples and you'll see how it just keeps happening. They don't they don't buy it. But at the same time, they're not wearing a tinfoil hat yet. No, they don't know what to really think, actually. It, it doesn't make them feel good. It's only a little thing, but there'll be plenty of others like that. And they'll all chip away at their certainty, chip away at their confidence, chip away at their feeling of security. It will make them feel insecure because they suspect they can't prove but they suspect oh, suspicion is worse if um, the G8 leaders were to march out on the world stage tomorrow morning and, and say hey we pulled 9-11 what are you going to do about it at least that would be something you could mobilise against that. people could march in the streets but suspicion is a whole different ball game especially carefully managed suspicion so these items are always pitched so that in this second grouping The ones who are too bright to be dumb, they're going to be rendered uncertain by that material. Now let's turn to the last group, an interesting group, the conspiracy theorists, to apply a catch-all phrase which really doesn't do justice to what the word implies. Conspiracy theorists are people who are actually capable of thinking. Some of them are nutjobs. We know that. Hey, there are forums where people like that, (laughs) where they can go and nutjob each other. But then there are conspiracy theorists which are people who have got flexible minds and are bright and they know this sucks. And they see the passport story and they go, <laughs> look, passport found in the street, give me a break. They don't buy it at all. And guess what? The people who planted that story, they want you to not buy it. Let's take another example and I'll show you how that works better than with the passport. Let's take, it's a different event. 77 similar event in fact 77 is very useful and i encourage people to study 77 because they had to distill their 911 technique get this now this is important they had to distill their 911 technique down for the relatively much smaller 77 event they use the same tactics but there's less of it going on and so you can actually see the tactics clearer Examine the aspects of that and you'll see what I mean. We're going to touch on one, what we mentioned earlier, that closed circuit television image. Okay, let's take the mainstreamers first. Mainstreamers see the closed circuit television image. They see it's not actually that good. There's only one as well. They're, They're aware of that. They're not, you know, totally stupid. And so that undermines their confidence. But subtly, not enough to cause them to jump ship and entertain wrongful thoughts. Now let's take the group in the middle. They see that kind of stuff. 
and it disturbs the heck out of them because it's not conclusive at all. And then finally, you get to the uh, group, the tinfoil hatters, the conspiracy theorists, and they see that and they laugh. And they say the government's clearly behind this. And now let me take a third example and you'll really see how it works. Let's take that Berg beheading video. The mainstreamers look at that Berg beheading video as far as they're concerned. There's not much in there that's aimed at them to disturb them. No, they're satisfied to achieve mere psychological warfare, standard psychological warfare, exposure to trauma-based material. Simple. It's the oldest game in the book. That can, that applies there. <laughs> Show people disturbing stuff, they get feel disturbed. Terrific. Now we move to the ones who are in the middle, who are undecided. Clearly had massive impacts there as well. Among the ones who are uncertain because of the sheer number of anomalies and the fact that this thing went round the internet, which, by the way, was another way of spreading the PSYOP onto the internet by releasing it. And then they did a big push. I mean, all the fakes did. Everybody did a big push on the huge number of anomalies that there were in this video, which, of course, made you go and look at it more to see the anomalies, which was more exposure to PSYOP. (laughs) They're getting plenty of bang for their buck here with these anomalies, mistakes. These weren't mistakes. There are no mistakes in there. Every single anomaly is deliberately created and planted and placed in it, particularly because not only do they want to undermine the confidence of that middle group, but they're aiming the Berg video at the conspiracy theorists, at those who are independent-minded and who are aware of what's going on. Because when they look at it, they see that those guys do look like special forces guys. And they look like special forces guys who just beheaded some dude. And that is pretty grisly. And that is pretty goddamn intimidating. Let's just see what they're saying. They're saying, yes, we are completely ruthless fuckers. Yes, we could do do this to you just as easy. We are totally and completely ruthless. Yes, we we know that you know this. And we don't care. And that's your clue into the the whole game. In In that particular instance, the intimidation or undermining of confidence or creation of internal repressed feelings are all part of a wide psychological effect which they're seeking across the entire population spectrum from total believers to gross unbelievers. They are pitching these in such a way as to maximize psychological warfare results in each of the three groupings. So this requires reorientation of original perception. That explains Alex Jones, of course. See, they don't want you suspecting 9-11 is an inside job. The people, get it, the people who have the brains to be the kind of people who would figure out that it is an inside job, who are definable by their intelligence and mental flexibility, those are the people that they want to know that 9-11 was an inside job. And they want to intimidate them. And they want to send messages that their concentration camps being prepared and the New World Order is taking over and jackboots are marching, blah, blah, blah. They are trying to intimidate the hell out of the people, the very people who are likely to be the intelligent opposition to what they've just done. This isn't stupid. This is clever. And they're extending that then by creating uncertainty, by creating uncertainty and by creating confusion and repression. So they have three different effects, and and some of these effects merge across the groups as well, but they do divide into these three primary groups. Group one, mainstreamers, repression. Group two, swaying in the middle, creating uncertainty, powerlessness, paranoia. And the third group, straightforward total intimidation. Uh, And what if that third group were to fight back against the intimidation? It's not going to apply. They've got so many CIA fakes deployed that they've got nobody to lead them anywhere except round in circles. So intimidation alone will keep them in the box. There's one implication of this, which is that you have to be careful that you're not actually just moving people around in the sections for them to to no great effect. In other words, if you convince a mainstreamer to have doubts, you simply move them from mainstreamer to, to middle grounder. Or if you convince a middle grounder, you'll move them into full-blown conspiracy theorist where they will now see the material in a new intimidatory light. You know what I mean? You've got to explain the bigger game or otherwise people will be bounced around inside of this war box. As I say, it doesn't apply just to 9-11. They're doing it all the time. Why do you think that Clinton and Bush Sr. are hanging out with each other? 
couldn't they be a bit more circumspect? There are a million ways for people to hang out with each other in private and the press won't even report it. No, Clinton and Bush Sr. are hanging out with each other right out there in plain sight in front of you. And that is to have an unspoken psychological effect. People are saying, huh, this is a bit funny, isn't it? But, you know, Clinton and Bush Sr. makes you wonder if they're all together, really, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? So it's the art of not saying, but saying at the same time. That's how they're playing this. And and they've used other undermining techniques. All the talk about the Constitution being scrapped. Constitution scrapped. Police state. Blah, blah, blah. They're not just running that on Alex Jones anymore. They're running that on mainstream media. Because it's designed to intimidate. E-voting scandals. Oh, your vote doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't even matter if you vote. They can fix the vote. Yet to undermine your commitment to oppose them in any way. And all of this is built in to 9-11. 9-11 contains stuff designed to make sure you know it was an inside job if you are of the right kind of mindset and to make sure you don't if you're of a different kind and to totally confuse you if you're caught somewhere in the middle. And uh, the astonishing thing is that they can do that because of these Chinese walls in the media. If you're in mainstream media, you're in the business of accepting what the government says or the opposition <laughs> and reporting fact. And so you're stuck in that box. And, of course, they are funneling PSYOP material, diversion material and confusion material into the giant media machine all the time with an agenda. They have an agenda that runs years ahead and that in detail, in great detail, in other words, what stories are going to break on what days, runs on a weekly schedule basis running ahead. So they know exactly what they're going to be feeding people. And they do that, of course, in the fakes, in the alternative media, which they own they do that as well they know exactly what stories they're going to run there too they are a media dissemination machine which is using psyop content where psyop is the overriding objective you know that anyway so this should be gelling with what you know already the climate of fear stuff the global warming the 2012 stuff the world's about to end stuff the aliens are about to invade the whatever the global police state is about to break out Anything that paralyzes you into fear instead of action. And in such quantity that it keeps you running around in circles forever, chasing the content, the latest content of the vast media psyop machine. You see, you, those of you who are listening to this broadcast, they knew you were out there and they wanted to make sure you knew what they just did. Because, you see, 93, something like that, percent of people in the United Kingdom think that Princess Di was murdered. But has it got them anywhere? No, because of media control and psychological warfare. That's how they control the civilian population. And making sure that you know 9-11 was an inside job because they want you reacting emotionally. They want you reacting to the vast splurge of orgy of evidence which they use to divert you away from doing anything about the war. And to keep you occupied. It doesn't matter how much junk they fed you. Kept you occupied. And off balance. And reacting emotionally. And they keep pushing your buttons. To make sure you keep reacting emotionally. I mean that's why we have in the lead up to another election. We have more talk of torture. 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 Illegal detention. Police. State. Because you've nowhere to go with that information. They've got the social structures locked down. So there's nowhere for you to go with the information. And as long as you don't realise the tactical games being played, as long as you're not thinking and responding strategically instead of emotionally, hey, they're on a winner. As we examine some of the events of the day of 9-11, let's bear in mind that this threefold fold war game is running throughout everything. You know, if they keep this up, there really is going to be some kind of a revolution. It will be a revolution in thought, a revolution that moves us on, all of us on to the next level this is another listener pick you're on the next level on breakfornews.com and we'll be right back and you're very welcome back you're on the next level on breakfornews.com so as we begin to examine the events of 9-11 we can put them in this context and some of this we already know parts of certainly those who uh, tune into break for news do and those who post on the forum that part of the wanting you to know if you're in the conspiracy theory group is confirmed by all that relentless focus on Bush Cheney. Bush did it. 
Bush did it. Ch- Bush Cheney, the neocons, Richard Pearl. Where did they go for people like Michael Chertoff, uh, Bernard Kerrick, <laughs> central casting for goons? Um, yeah, exactly. All of that is is a show. And the objective there is to get you reacting emotionally to Bush Cheney did it. And they did. Um, so you're aware of that aspect of wanting you to know. They wanted you to know. And here's an example of how that played out and how it helps you analyze 9-11. The fact that they wanted you to know that they did it explains the Muhammad Atta thing. The whole Muhammad Atta gambit can now be seen in a context where it begins to make sense. You see, back in the days before Dan Hofziker broke the story of Muhammad Atta, the coke-snorting maniac and party dude. Back before then, uh, we didn't have an awful lot to go on. We had the wrong tower fell first and the fact that Silverstein had purchased the World Trade Center complex just weeks beforehand, etc. We had circumstantial evidence, but we didn't have anything that you could point to and just go, what? This proves that there's something fishy about all this. And the moment that Dan Hopsicker released those Muhammad Atta stories and the tales Amanda Keller was telling. That's when suddenly we had some meat on the story and it began to take off. Now other evidence emerged, evidence in inverted commas, and now you know why the inverted commas are necessary because you never know which way that's been spun to you. Um, Other stuff, evidence came out and the story accumulated and, and we know where it all went. But the Muhammad Atta story was the one that made it take off. Because people looked at the story of Muhammad and they went, what, this is totally inconsistent with the government story, that this was a fanatical Muslim, this is a party dude, coke-snorting maniac, and it just doesn't add up, and there's something definitely going on here. And when people began to realise that, they went, terrific, got him. Part of the reason they said got him was, tactically, in the longer term, they were going to split the anti-war movement into the 9-11 movement and the anti-war movement, get it? They were going to use 9-11 because they have, they're have they in control of this anyway. It's never going to get out of the box so they can play games. They can take, in inverted commas, risks that you wouldn't think they could take if you didn't realize how much they control the whole game. But we do. And so we know that risk is a very relative term for these guys. And so they take the risk of allowing it to come out that there's something wrong with the government story. Knowing it's boxed, you know that that story is never appeared in mainstream media and yet it was the lifeblood of the 9-11 conspiracy movement there's the segmentation at play and of course you have that group in the middle who don't know what to believe so they had a divide and conquer tactic strategy worked out well in advance as to how they would play the 9-11 issue hard at exactly the time when it would split opposition when it would reduce the numbers who would be opposing the growing momentum towards war because a huge bunch of them would be fighting the 9-11 issue as they saw it at the time. So that was a divide and conquer tactic. And they also then played in the stolen election issue in order to bury the 9-11 issue subsequently. And they were running the whole show because, of course, they knew they were going to have John Kerry in place to screw everybody, which was also a psychological warfare game. You see what I'm saying? Everything psychological warfare. Let's take another piece of evidence. Let's take the fact that the towers changed hands only seven weeks beforehand. Only seven weeks beforehand. It's exactly the same MO as George Bush Sr. and Bill Clinton hanging out together. It's two in your face. For crying out loud, could they not have done that transaction six months beforehand or a year beforehand? Why leave it till seven weeks beforehand for the towers to change hands for the first time since they were built? Standing there for almost 50 years and suddenly they change hands seven weeks beforehand. It's like as if they nearly wanted you to know. Yes, it is. The cover-up dynamics do not apply here. It's a whole different political landscape. It's a landscape in which the idea that JFK was assassinated is understood by people. They know about the dark things that governments do. They know about that in the dark recesses of their mind. It doesn't, it's not a new story. And so it's played into. They're playing into the cliche in people's brains and they're using that to control the outcome across all sections. And they're planting information deliberately to achieve psychological warfare effects in the target audience. And only when you understand that can you make sense of why the towers changed hands seven weeks beforehand and why the Muhammad Atta story came out and now is starting to turn into 
something else, a diversion into a drug story which has got nothing to do with where we thought it was going to take us and people talking about two Muhammad Atta's now maybe not one so maybe it wasn't him and it suddenly what seems so promising starts to turn to vapour and as I pointed out in the last audio about where you only get one one source and your entire chain of evidence is resting then at one critical point on that one source whether it's the ISI paying Muhammad Atta 50,000 reported only by one source Times of India from Indian intelligence or whether it's Muhammad Atta being described as this this party maniac and it's only coming from one journalist heavily based on the word of another single source heavily based on Amanda Keller weak links which look strong at the time and which enable them to steer you in certain directions that's the sophistication of the presentation of the various pieces of evidence about 9-11 it's not a question of arguing was Muhammad Atta this was Muhammad Atta that you're playing their game people have got to be enabled to see the bigger picture this is the intelligent picture this is why you're here this is the next level this is why we're all here is because we're moving on to the next level where our buttons are not pushed so easily but these people in the construction and design of this have been appallingly clever in the way they've designed this it's chess it's geopolitical chess and it's chess type manipulation of the general population using psychological warfare tactics and that stuff is all over the issues that come up in the 9-11 story and you've got to get other people onto this next level it's not a question of what does the the question is not whether George Bush or Dick Cheney pushed the right buttons or were sitting in command center blah 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 that's not the story the story is why were George Bush and Dick Cheney selected as the approved patsies in the alternative media for pulling off 9-11? What was it that was bigger that was being hidden? Well, the involvement of the entire G8 geopolitical elite and their intelligence agencies in the operation. So unless you see the bigger picture, you get sucked into these. And we've seen an example of that recently on the forum. It's not the first time where people have discovered the 9-11 issue and ended up totally confused as to who was the government fakes, who wasn't, etc. And were there planes, were there no planes? Totally confused. And that's the danger of playing the 9-11 issue with people in terms of trying to tune them into what's going on by going on an issue by issue by issue by issue basis right through the 9-11 evidence without ever having it in the proper context at all. Uh, Let me give you an example. A, A simple example that you could use to tune somebody in who's already a bit tuned in. Tune them into what's really going on the issue of that 7-7 CCTV footage. If you're talking to somebody who who doesn't buy the government line, but they're not like hugely informed, but they they don't buy the government line on this, and they haven't read the material like you have, because most of the people here on Break for News are pretty expert, you you can say to them, well, in the knowledge that you're already suspicious, take a look at that photo and, and ask yourself, how could somebody do such a crummy job when it's so important? Why did they do a messy job? And then you're on the verge of tuning them into the fact that the government wanted a certain section of the population to know they'd pulled this thing off. It was part of the same kind of intimidatory tactics we saw with the seemingly senseless killing of Jean-Charles de Menezes on the London Underground. There was no sense to it at all, except, of course, climate of fear. So that's what you can tune people into, is to how sophisticated the game is. Otherwise, they're playing checkers against chess players. So that's the challenge, is to tune people in, not just to the fact that 9-11 was an inside job, but to tune them into the Psy War, the overall Psy War context in which 9-11 and 7-7 took place. Now, moving on into some more elements of the 9-11 story, let's turn to the Pentagon. And here again, we can see this dynamic, and this is what's so good about this, because everywhere you look, you can find confirmation of that dynamic at play. Here again, we see them wanting you to know that no plane hit the Pentagon. That's the objective. That's why one of the early sites to come out was the Hunt the Boeing site. Now, in the end, it turns out that you actually don't have anything to go on in the Pentagon. But it's presented and pushed hard as evidence that 9-11 was an inside job. Very sophisticated in the mainstream. It's sort of a, a joke, you know, the Hunt, hunt the Boeing. It, it's uh, pitched in a slightly amusing way. Uh, and at the same time, it empowers and drives the 9-11 people who who take a look at this and say, right, this confirms our suspicions, our deepest suspicions. And because their deepest suspicions are true, they're easy prey for planted material, which seems to confirm their deepest suspicions. 
And so in the case of the Pentagon, that's the dynamic at play there. And therefore, the corollary is true. The Pentagon was hit by a plane full of people, and they were the right people, and it was the right plane. So, you know, there you go. That's where we're at now. The huge, overwhelming preponderance of evidence that we have indicates that the Pentagon was hit by a plane, and it was the right kind of plane. And the whole Pentagon thing is is a total reverse conspiracy theory because it's the government that's hiding the stuff that would dismiss the conspiracy theory outright. They're the ones who are not releasing details of the forensic examination of the scene, which would just end the matter. They're the ones releasing crappy video frames in order to drag the thing out. And of course, the Pentagon issue serves as a way of dividing the 9-11 movement. We all know that one. But you can see in the Pentagon, at the same time, both plant information, which is going to be insubstantial in the long term, and in the short term, reinforce your conviction that you have to fight tooth and nail right now to oppose these people who pulled off 9-11 and get the truth out on 9-11. A noble objective, but given the amount of psyop and confusion and disinformation material and the presence of the CIA fakes, it's likely to remain merely a noble objective, unless we're all careful. And one of the things to be most careful of is the, the whole approach that we have to this issue. Here I am, well into the third episode, and now I'm starting to deal with specific issues in 9-11, like the passport, or Muhammad Atta, or the Pentagon. Only now, already over halfway through the third episode, am I starting to deal with those issues. I know there were many who expected me to get stuck in straight away on the fall rate of the towers, and the size of the holes, and the angle of the wings, and all that kind of stuff. Because that approach has been hammered home by all the CIA fakes for the last goddamn five years. So no wonder there's an expectation that this is the way you deal with the 9-11 issue. You argue these kind of points. You don't, not unless you want to play their game. You contextualize all these points into a context in which it makes sense. The investigation forum on BreakForNews.com is called the 3i Investigation. The Independent International Investigation. 3i, of course, is also a reference to third eye, and it highlights that this process is an intelligent process that we're involved in. This is the application of intelligence to the 9-11 issue. And in a dumbed-down society, that's a revolutionary act. The uh, One of the graphics for wagkingdom.com is uh, George Bush Sr. in the form of that dofus out of uh, Mad Magazine saying, either you're with us on this or you're intelligent. That was a phrase I coined at the time. Either you're with us on this or you're intelligent. Exactly. Because the opposite of that is to react emotionally, not intelligently, a descent into the body. That's why beheading has played a part in all this. It's about cutting off the head and a descent into the body, into the emotions, loss of intellect leading to the triumph of emotion, which is at the heart of fascism. Now, no books are actually being burned right now, and uh, we haven't seen intellectuals getting killed in the streets, which are the classic precursors to the rise of fascism. They don't have to be burned. It's all being effectively done with psyops. They have psyoped the Christian fundamentalists into place carefully over 20, 25 years of slow, methodical marketing to the point where they now have them acting as the stormtroopers of the New Reich. And they're just as effectively psyoping the left opposition to that Christian fundamentalism with the same kind of sophisticated psyop games. And and in a way, that's its undoing, isn't it? Because at heart it's cliché, and that's no more obvious than in the latest whistleblower movie. We've had so many movies now. If you haven't had a movie made around you or about you on this issue, you're nobody. So... We have a John O'Neill movie, we have a Sibel Edmonds movie, and it's Kill the Messenger. And you can find that in the forum on breakfornews.com. Just search for Kill the Messenger. You'll get that link to that video. And it's so cliche, it's like one woman versus its enemy of the state. One woman trying to get the truth out. The forces of repression are trying to prevent her, gagging her. It's cliche. Yet, because people are so used to that landscape, and because they have carefully cultivated the whole ambience of the alternative media on the internet over the last five, seven, eight, nine, ten years. They've cultivated the whole landscape so well that they can play this material and it just goes down a bomb. 
with anybody who isn't tuned in to the next level. Thankfully, a lot of people on Break for News are. And so we continue our investigations in the forum. And thanks to all of those who are participating. And we will continue to go through all of the elements of the story of 9-11. But as we do, we'll be contextualizing as we go. We'll have our eyes wide open. Remember, it was intelligence that pulled this off. But we've got the intelligence to take 9-11 to the next level. And it means something that in one place on the internet, we're onto them. I've looked around and I can't find anywhere else that's onto them at the level we are. I'm sure you've looked around and found the same. And that's why we're all here. Thanks for hanging in with this. I hope your patience is being rewarded and that the confusion is being dispelled and the picture is becoming clearer. I will be back shortly with more on this and on other topics because we're going to cover some other issues as well. Even we can't take wall-to-wall 9-11 forever and so we'll be mixing in other topics as we go on. But anyhow, I will be back shortly with more and I do hope you can join me for that. But in the meantime, forbreakfornews.com. This has been Fenton Dunn reporting. Oh,